Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Life Reimagined. I know it's been quite a while since our last video, but the good news is we are still alive. Now the main reason why we didn't put out a video um, in a couple of months now is that we've been wanting to tell you guys some good news about the project and we didn't really get any, everything took forever and yeah, just took a very long time. So now we thought, okay, we can't put it off much longer. We do want to um, make more videos. We know you guys are waiting for it. Um, and we did throw ourselves into kind of two really big projects to distract ourselves from all of this. And they took up a lot of time, were pretty intense. Um, but we did film a lot of stuff along the way and we are finally ready to share that with you. We do finally have some news about our building permission. So if you're curious um, to figure out what that is, then make sure you stick around till the end. So the first big project that we've been working on over the last few months is this. So initially uh, I only wanted to do a few beds and I thought oh yeah I can just dig them up by hand, not a problem. I measured out the beds and I started digging. Um, but yeah, I quickly realized that if we do it, we might as well do it properly. And there was no chance that I would be able to dig all of these beds by hand by myself. So luckily we have a friend who has a mini digger and we borrowed that mini digger because we needed to dig a trench on the land. And whilst we had that digger, we thought, hey, why don't we use that and also dig up all the soil um, and all the ground here where we want to put the vegetable garden because initially uh, this was all completely overgrown with brambles so the ground is pretty good because it's at the bottom of the valley so all the nutrients come down here um, so it's pretty good soil but it was just full of bramble roots and full of rocks uh, so it took a, a lot of time to get the ground ready and we were really glad that we could borrow that mini digger because it sped up everything by so much. So all that was left after we dug up the area for the vegetable garden was for me to um, pick out all the bigger rocks and stones. There were quite a lot of them in the ground, some really, really big ones. Um, but actually it was really good because I decided to use those to make the border of the beds. Um, at first I was wanting to do raised beds and we thought we would build something nice with wood. But because we wanted to keep the costs low and also because I wanted to make sure that we really use as little water as possible, um, I ended up deciding to put them as low to the ground as possible because that way they're much closer to the water. Um, and yeah, you're just going to need less water overall. Once we had the ground clear, it was time to put up the fence. So our land is not fenced in at all. So it was crucial that we would fence in the vegetable garden because we do have a lot of wild boars and wildlife around here. Um, it's quite a big area, so it is 6 meters by 40 meters and the way that is kind of this like long shape is that this is the edge of our boundary um, and we wanted to use as much flat area as possible and then we did want to make sure that we have a big gate over here where we could still drive down a mini digger uh, if we needed to have access to the mobile home. So that's why it's kind of this long shape and putting up the fence was quite a lot of work digging those um, post holes and hammering in the fence posts they were like two meters and one and a half meters so yeah it was really 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 hard work but I think we did a good job for putting up our first fence um, and it will definitely help to keep all that wildlife out. Let's have a look inside and I'll tell you a bit more about what I did there exactly. So I made the outline of the beds with the stones that we dug up on the from the ground um, and then I filled the beds with compost as you can see here. The compost we got from our local waste management uh, company so they collect all the waste from Portimao and all the bio waste uh, and they uh, make really really good compost uh, out of all that stuff and because it's done by the city it's subsidized and you can then buy the compost from them and because it's subsidized it's not really expensive and it's really 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 good soil uh, especially meant for organic farming on top of the um, compost i added a lot of straw as mulch um, so it's a really really thick layer and what that does is first of all it suppresses uh, weeds 
um, but it also um, keeps all the moisture in so again it helps with watering and that you need a lot less water. Oh, one thing I forgot there, below the straw and the compost is a layer of cardboard because as I mentioned there was a lot of brambles and um, weeds and stuff around here and grass so to stop that from coming back through I also put a layer of cardboard then the compost and then the straw and that's been really really good at making sure that none of that stuff comes back. And for the paths I also put down cardboard um, again to suppress the, the weeds and the blackberries from coming back and then I just put um, a lot of wood chips down so you have really really nice paths to walk on. Um, the reason why I used straw as mulch for the beds and not wood chips is that wood chips are really really good for mulch for around trees but if you want to grow vegetables um, straw is much better because the um, wood chips they support a type of fungus and they're a really good environment for a certain type of fungus to grow in which isn't very good if you want to grow vegetables but is very good if you want to watch if you want to grow trees as you can see here we now have irrigation everywhere so everything is being watered automatically this is something we should have done right in the beginning because it did get very hot very quickly and I, have to, I had to hand water the entire garden every night which took me about two hours um, and I'm so glad that we now have the irrigation it's all watered automatically I don't really have to do anything anymore um, so yeah if you start your own vegetable garden think about that uh, at the beginning and make sure you have that right away because the plants do grow really really quickly uh, and suddenly it takes up a lot of your time the way that we set up the irrigation is we got five big IBC tanks and put them at the highest point of our hill. So there's about 10 meter height difference to here. Um, and when we got water delivered for our mobile home, we also got them filled up so they will last us a while. But once they are empty, the plan is to pump the water from the lake into the barrels. And then the water comes down here through this really big um, irrigation pipe that is 60 millimeters. Um, and then it goes into this, these smaller pipes, so here's our timer where it automatically turns on. It, it gets into the smaller pipes, these are 20 millimeters, um, and then yeah, automatically waters all the rows. We decided to use drip irrigation because it's the most efficient way to irrigate where you need the least amount of water. If you imagine if you have a water sprinkler, a lot of that just um, goes into the air or evaporates. So that way and with the most, we can be really, really efficient at how much water we're using. And because water is a very, very scarce resource in, here in the Algarve, that was really important to us. I'm sure you're all curious about what we're actually growing here. So let me show you. Here we've got two rows of tomatoes. They are like big round juicy tomatoes and um, small cocktail tomatoes. And in this first bed we have some peppers and a cucumber. Over here we have some strawberries, some lettuce. We've also planted a, a small lemon tree in the middle. And then this giant thing over here is uh, cucumbers but it is small cucumbers um, that you can then pickle or you can eat them uh, as they are but they're also really good pickles so I'm really looking forward to making some some pickled gherkins being German. Here we have even more tomatoes I wasn't really planning on growing so many tomatoes but all my tomato plants survived so I planted them and now we've got a tomato jungle going on but the good thing is with tomatoes you can preserve them you can make tomato sauce and also I love tomatoes so I don't mind having a lot of tomatoes. This bed is um, potatoes so they're almost ready to be harvested. I planted them a little bit late. I was actually surprised that they're still doing so well given how uh, hot it's already been. Um, so yeah they're gonna be harvested soon and these giant bushes over here are butternut squash. Um, someone told me recently that they can get 55 square meters big if you let them so I didn't quite realize how big they were getting but I think they look beautiful. Um, there's the first ones already growing so they're all looking really good and then this bed in the front is all zucchinis. Um, again it's quite a lot of zucchini plants because I didn't realize how many um, fruits or vegetables would come off one zucchini so we've been having plenty of zucchini already given them away to neighbors and friends and I don't even really know what to do with so much zucchini so yeah if you do your own garden you don't need that many zucchini plants <laughs> in this bed down here we have um, melons 
there's also some coming already looking really good and then we have some red beets and some cauliflower over here this bed is also um, cauliflower and some broccoli and red cabbage in between i've planted some sage as well and this bed down there is eggplant and peppers little onions going on here um, as you can see here the brambles are coming back through the cardboard so i'm gonna need to get them out and um, put some more mulch on top but overall the cardboard has been working quite well to keep them down there is some more peppers in this bed and this one here is actually uh, rhubarb so this was an experiment because I thought that you couldn't really grow rhubarb here because it would be too hot uh, but I just wanted to give it a try and yeah they're actually growing quite well so I'm pretty excited to see if we will have some rhubarb at some point yeah and that is basically everything we've got growing here so far and yeah we've already been starting to harvest a few things so this was our garden and as I promised at the beginning of the video, we do have an update on our building permit situation. So after we received a letter in February um, where they said no to our building permission, we did appeal their decision. And unfortunately, the fire commission denied that appeal. And they recommended that we um, would rebuild the ruin that's already on there. That's fine. That shouldn't be a problem. The thing is, that ruin is only 60 square meters. You know, we wanted to build a Turismo Rural with around 500 square meters with four units a house for us to live in so 60 square meters just didn't really make any sense for us um, and we looked into like why that was what they recommended and the thing is now with these um, fire rules is that you have to be at least if to build a normal house you have to be at least 50 meters away from the boundary of your neighbor in any direction and that wouldn't be possible on our land um, but we did find out that if you build a tourism rural you only have to be 10 meters away from the boundary so obviously that then becomes possible again especially because where the ruin is we do have a small strip of medium fire um, risk area which is area that we would still be allowed to build in so after a lot of thinking about the problem and trying to come up with solutions and figure out, out a way how we can still build this eco resort um, we figured out a way to just obviously we're not able to build all of it but to fit around 350 square meters into the medium fire risk area. So we had to redesign everything and it's not gonna be four units, it's only gonna be two units and um, a house for us to live in. Um, but we thought that is a really, really good start. And um, yeah, something that we can get started on if we get, can get it approved. Um, and we were told that maybe in a few years they would be looking at those fire um, zones again and they might be changing it. So maybe we could then still build the other units in the future, who knows. Um, but this is a very, very good compromise uh, for us. And our architects are working on the plans. They will be resubmitted this week. So yeah, fingers crossed uh, that we get that approved very, very soon and then we can start building. Oh, that's it for this week, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Um, and yeah, stay tuned for next week where we'll share the second big project that we've been working on over the last few months.